Luckily, uh, we have a little bit of time at the end of mission to, to relax and look out the window a little bit. The first nine days were a real sprint, but uh, we had a little bit of time to look out the window, and, and this is actually a lot of fun to look out the window back at the planet Earth. It's, it's just incredibly beautiful. Obviously, had some time to take some pictures. It's hard to describe, you know, and, and these pictures don't really capture the real, uh, all the colors and the amazing glory of uh, God's creation. Uh, people ask me most often, you know, what was it like? Well, this is what it was like. This is a sunrise. And uh, it's just pretty, it, it, it all happens so fast because we're traveling around the world so quickly, you know, once every 90 minutes. And we get, we get to see one of these then every 45 minutes, a sunrise and then a sunset. Just incredible colors. I wish I had paid better attention in geography class, though. <laughs> so you don't really have a map, you know, and there's no, there's no lines on the ground. But, uh, so we're always, especially when we're out on an EVA, I'm always asking, you know, where are we, where are we? Just, you're looking down and you're seeing all this cool stuff, but you just, you know, can't really tell where you are. But this is, uh, this is the Red Sea, this is the Nile. You can see the Nile River Delta right there going into the Med, the Sinai Peninsula, and then uh, Israel's over there. This uh, looks like a nice vacation spot in the uh, Caribbean, but just the, the colors that you can see there, just even out in the water, you know, the blues and the greens, really beautiful. These are the uh, Himalayas. You can see that from space, and you can see down here is actually uh, Mount Everest. So you can see that. Does anybody know what this is? Cool, swir swirly clouds, right? Somebody was up there <laughs> here this morning. Yeah, just you can just be amazed at all the cool clouds that you get to see when you're up there too. Just really neat stuff. This is one of my favorite things: is being able to look back at the Earth, and we can see for about a thousand miles to the horizon. So you can see, um, you know, there's darkness over here. This is night. These people are in night, and these guys over here are still in the day. And then this was kind of my favorite spot right here. In the, the dust, that really beautiful charcoal gray color with some of the uh, colors of the sunset in here. Um, just incredibly beautiful. Here's uh, some, a night shot, uh, some of the northern lights, actually off the south coast of uh, Australia. And these are the solar arrays from the station in the uh, foreground. Not everything was... Uh, was beautiful. This is actually a picture of the oil spill in the Gulf. We could see it as we flew over um, on our last mission this past May. So we had a little time. This is from this, uh, again, from the mission uh, this May. This is on board the uh, International Space Station in this little module called the Cupola. And it has a, a window that's looking straight down at the Earth and then this just a panoramic view of these other windows all around you. So it's other than going outside on a spacewalk, this is probably the best view you can get uh, up on station. And I've got the uh, got the knee shirt on there. <laughs> there was also some time for some of the you know stupid astronaut tricks. So this is uh, this is me looking through a, a ball of water. It's kind of neat because my image is uh, inverted, but uh, you know up there water. Uh, the viscous forces of the, you know, the surface tension on the water will keep it together in a big ball like that. You know, here on Earth, if you, you know, squirted water out and, you know, fall all over the floor. But up there, it stays in this ball, and so you can have a lot of fun with balls of water up there. Um, you can actually stick your straw in that thing then and just suck it on that. So, cleanup's a lot easier. Here's a picture of the uh, International Space Station. I mean, uh, I thought Hubble was big, and this thing is huge. It's about a football field across here. Um, and again, about this, about a football field this way, the length of the solar arrays. And this is a shot after we had undocked from the station and we were doing a fly around. Just, uh, it's our chance to take a lap around the, the station and in the shuttle, and we're taking pictures of it the whole time. And you'll see this in the movie too. But this is actually Lake Erie right here. So we're flying west to east uh, along Lake Erie, and this is uh, Cleveland right there. So we're probably down in here somewhere. So that's what you guys look like from space. I think you had your eyes closed.
Eventually, we were getting low on uh, cryo, on our fuel, and it was time to come home. So we had to turn the orbiter back into a glider for landing. Uh, we set up the men's warehouse here on the mid-deck and uh, got our suits ready to go, got back in those, and uh, made our landing. Um, this landing is out at Edwards Air Force Base. On my first mission, um, the weather in Florida was pretty bad, so we uh, you know, spent two extra days in space and uh, still ended up going out to Edwards for the landing. So before I finish up and get to the, uh, get to the movie, I just wanted to share with you some of the pictures that we've gotten back from Hubble now. So Hubble's taken these pictures. And it, what's you know, impressive to me or, or rewarding is that uh, these pictures were taken after we were there. So these are taken with the new cameras and the new instruments that we put in. So it's pretty satisfying to know that, hey, we didn't break the, the telescope <laughs> and that this thing actually works and that you get pictures back like this. This is um, a small region inside the massive star cluster Omega Centauri. It has nearly 10 million stars in it. And these stars are all between about 10 to 12 billion years old. And um, what's neat about this picture is with this new camera, you can see the different color stars. You know, the reds and the blues, the yellows, the whites. And so you get an idea of what, you know, kind of where they are in their life cycle and what, you know, what gases that they're burning. This is um, kind of a star-forming region in a place called Carina. It was taken with the, wide, the new Wide Field Camera 3. This place is about 7,500 uh, light years away. And what's interesting is this, this is a look through the visible channel of that camera, but it also has an infrared channel that you can see through the cloud gas there and you can see into the, uh, the formation here of this new solar system and all these new stars being formed inside that. This is the Butterfly Nebula, I mean, just a, a beautiful picture again, but this is a, um, also taken with the Wide Field Camera 3. It's about 3,800 light years away, and it's about two light years across this thing. And it's ejecting gases out at about 500,000 miles per hour. This is called uh, Stephens Quintet, and there's actually five galaxies in this picture. These two in the middle are uh, actually colliding and interacting with each other. And then this one up here on the top left is kind of the one in contrast. You can break out the individual stars in that uh, galaxy, which tells us that it's much closer to us. It's about 40 million light years away. All those other ones, the other four are about 290 million light years away. So I'll get to, uh, I have a short movie and then we'll, I'll take some questions, but uh, there's really two points that I want you to take away from tonight. Um, the first is that we're living on this uh, beautiful spaceship right now. I don't know if you guys realize that, but we're all living on a spaceship. This is our spaceship. From 300 miles up, I can look back at the planet Earth and I can see the, the entire horizon, all 360 degrees. And when you look back at it, you can tell that you were looking at a planet, you know? So we're all on this dead rock, and we're all living right on the surface of it. I mean, even the deepest oceans are only a fraction of the, uh, the depth of the atmosphere, you know? And you can see the atmosphere right here in this picture. That little blue ribbon is the atmosphere, you know? What I learned flying in space is that the sky is black. You know, the sky down here looks blue to us as the light comes through the atmosphere, but Actually, the sky is black. That's the blue part right there. And everything above it in all directions is black. So, this is our spaceship, you know. We're all on it together, by the way. You know, it doesn't matter where you're from or what language you speak. We're all on this thing together, so we're responsible for it. And we've got to take care of it. The, uh, the second thing that I want you to take away is that... Uh, that slide at the beginning that said, no dream is impossible. For me, this truly was a dream come true as I made two flights to space, one to Hubble and one to the space station. My dream to fly in space started when I was in school. I knew then that I wanted to be a part of this aerospace business. I wanted to someday 
maybe design and build rockets and airplanes. And I was able to turn my dreams into goals and make my goals become a reality. But it's not really an easy task. So how do you get there? How do you do that? Vince Lombardi, the great coach of the Green Bay Packers, said that winning is about 75% mental. A coach's job is to get his players psyched up and believing that they can win. So first you have to be able to dream it. And that means having confidence in you and thinking, hey, I can do that. Remember, nothing is impossible. Next, you have to envision your dreams becoming a reality. Well, what does that mean? It means that you have to make goals for yourself, and you have to set, make those goals high. You need to lay out a path for success. If we believe in ourselves, then we will have well-defined goals. And the deeper our belief, the harder we will work toward achieving those goals. So hard work is the other 25% of that equation. Because it's going to take a lot of hard work. And there's going to be some hard times, there's going to be some failures, and there's going to be some roadblocks along the way. So you have to persevere. You have to push through that. My uh, cross-country coach in high school right here at Brexville, uh, Bruce Lurch, handed this piece of paper to me as he was getting us ready to, uh, for the, uh, I don't know, Lou, if it was cross country or track, but uh, you can picture Bruce giving us this stuff. You know, and he was trying to uh, get us ready for the conference meet, but uh, he was one of the guys that inspired me, not just to run, but to do great things. So let's read this. It's about success. The line between success and failure is so fine that we scarcely know when we pass it. So fine that we're often on the line and we don't know it. How many man has thrown up his hands at a time when a little more effort, a little more patience would have achieved success? There is no defeat except in no longer trying. So follow your dreams. Hold on to your dreams. No one here is too young or too old to dream. My advice, especially to the students here, is for right now, study hard and dream big. While I was on orbit, I celebrated the 25th anniversary of my uh, commissioning in the Air Force. It was really an honor for me to fly as an active duty officer. And it's an honor for me to come back home now and to join all of you tonight. And I really appreciate you guys coming out and listening to me talk about space and success. So to all of you, Godspeed as you journey through life and pursue your dreams. I salute you.